we're back live here at HP Discover. Uh, this is day three of HP Discover, and uh, this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's uh, flagship telecast. We go out to the events and we uh, ask the questions, get the knowledge, share that with you, put the data out on the network, and uh, provide some uh, chances for people to talk and, and share their opinions and their knowledge, extracting the signal from the noise. But also we want to do some analysis. Um, Dave Vellante, co-host Dave, uh, in this segment we're going to do some analysis and give us a perspective of what we see here at HP Discover. Um, first, I'll just uh, start it off by saying that uh, HP Discover, um, now that we're in day three, is really a different event than, than I've seen in the past. And I, I would say that on a scale of one to 10, 10 being a total home run, I'd give this a really good seven and a half. Seven and a half mainly because Meg Whitman delivered a really good uh, presentation. She's very consistent, conservative, which is great for the company, but she's rallying the troops and it's pretty clear um, that a couple things are happening. The employees and the partners here have a different vibe than last year. They're positive, they're upbeat. You really see some good energy. They got a spring in their step as we were saying yesterday. But also, you can see that the messaging around autonomy and big data are really absolutely not just fluff. Um, one of the things that I was watching for this week was that aspect of it. So overall, very positive show, I give it a seven and a half. What would you, what would you rate that? Yeah, I would two? say somewhere in the seven, seven and a half range. I, I definitely don't think it's a 10 for the following reasons. I don't think the audience is as energized as I would like to see. I'd like to see some more energy in the audience, number one. Number two is, I don't think by its very nature that HP is leading vision in the industry. And I think actually that's a good thing. Because last year, Leo Apoteca tried to make an attempt to be a visionary leader. It fell flat in its face because that's really not what HP's all about. So Meg, I think, was much more credible, resonating with the core HP audience. Let's do some analysis on Meg Whitman because I think uh, the audience uh, should understand from Marshall. We've been pretty close to the HP over the years, and and let's uh, let's let's unpack that a little. So so Meg Whitman, honestly, um, getting a lot of heat. She took over, inherited ton of baggage. We talked to Scott McNeely, who was really big supporting her, speaks very highly of her. Um, she's got a great reputation in the industry, great person um, and, and executive, and obviously she ran for governor in California, although she didn't get elected. I think that might have been a good thing. California's a, uh, a mess uh, at many levels. But um, I think I'm impressed with her. I think that you're right. If she tried to go way too much with the vision, that really is not the priority. I think I see her uh, doing a really, really strong job of, of, of one thing that's really important. She's really sequencing the execution of a turnaround. Um, I don't like the word turnaround because it, it makes HP look really like they're more screwed up than they, than they really are, in my opinion. But at the top of the company, that's where the leadership was needing some, some, cha some change in direction. She's not trying to overstep herself. She's really getting the house in order first. Um, they still have some good messaging with the cloud. It's a little bit you know, all over the place, but still, you know, like I said yesterday, we can see that core message coming out of that. It still needs some work, but I think that's a little bit the cart before the horse. I think the, tur the reason for the word turnaround is because of the stock price. I mean, I think it's that simple. The stock price needs to go up. It's been decimated. Uh, the value of HP has just been you know, sucked out. HP's lost more value in the last year and a half than it is worth today. Um, and, and I think you know a lot of that goes on Apotecker. The question I have, I would be wondering, you know, wonder what you think about this is, how much of that is Heard? I mean, Heard gets a lot of the credit, and Heard did a good job for Wall Street, but he, you know, the criticism is he cut to the bone. Yeah. Now HP's paying the price. What's well, your take well, on that? Well, we, you know, we spent a, a lot of time with HP over the past, uh, you know, five years, and you know, as an analyst and watching the company at many levels, and and um, and I've written a lot of blog posts. And <laughs> you go back in the history, you'll see some of the things we talked about. But I think here's the here's what happened. Heard was a really, really strong executive. He was a really good operator. And uh, after Carly Farina, he took HP and turned it around and delivered real value to shareholders. At the expense of maybe grinding a little bit too hard to the bone uh, at HP, um, obviously the R&D investment was, was well documented that he didn't really invest that much. Um, so that had an effect. And you know, after a while you cut, 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 you kind of get a diminishing return on that point. So I think you know, he had some vision, but not a lot. And I think that really hurt the company. And obviously the scandal that he, that he was surrounded in was really just unfortunate and events that forced him to go out. But uh, I think that was the tipping point. Leo tried to come in and do his thing on HP. And that was really a fatal move because HP is a huge battleship. You can't just turn it around like that. And I, I think if Meg Whitman had taken over um, for Heard, I don't think that they would have had that mess. And I don't, I don't think that they probably would have bought autonomy. I, I kind of stand on that. Um, 
Uh, I was critical of the autonomy acquisition, but I got to say, I'm looking at this now and saying, HP is truly integrating it in. It's not just lip service. So, so Meg inherited a lot of the Leo baggage. That carried over from Herd, but I will say that if Meg was the CEO after Herd, Dave, it, this probably would not have happened. She's just too savvy of an executive and person to let that kind of obvious people management problem be mismanaged, that Leo obviously mismanaged that. Now the other thing that Meg Whitman said in her keynote was that we are not trying to become a software company. And okay, that's cool. I'm not trying to become a software company, I'm not trying to transform ourselves into a software company. That's fine. However, I think HP absolutely has to get its software house in order. It's got to be a much larger contributor to the software industry, and software has to be a bigger contributor to its revenues and its bottom line. So, you know, I agree with you on autonomy. I think there's some real valuable assets there. My concern is they could have had those assets two or three years ago. That's really, you know, the information management group, you know, uh, we know, John, they, they could have picked that up for probably three or four billion at the time. And, yeah. and so, you know, that's a lost opportunity. You can't cry over spilled milk, but I think that HP really has to focus on getting its software act together. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously we would like to have Meg Whitman on theCUBE. So Meg, if you're watching, uh, we'd like to have you on theCUBE uh, and, and have these candid conversations. Uh, we won't go after you hard like the press, uh, press do. But I think here's my take on HP. Um, although she's in, on record saying that she's not going to spin off the uh, printer division uh, or the personal computer division, I'm hearing sources that there's some tire kicking going around around the printers and PC division being spun out. And I think that's a bad move for the following reasons. HP spun out Agilent, and I don't think that went well. It was a good bump for the, for the stock prices in here and there, but long term Agilent kind of you know, didn't have a good path. Um, the second thing is, is that going back into HP's history, I, and I commented on the laser jet portion yesterday, that the HP would not be around today, in my opinion, if it wasn't for the laser jet. So in the eight, late 80s, they came out of the recession and uh, all the mini computer companies were booming. And all of a sudden, it's the, start, the market started changing. And what happened was, is that all those guys, Data General, Digital Equipment Corporation, ended up kind of dying. So I don't think HP would have been the company, but what happened in the 80s was the laser jet was born. The laser jet spawned a channel of distribution that created a lot of wealth. And, and my story, anecdotally, is that uh, you know, HP had that calculator division, Dave, the story about the calculators, that was not making any money, but it had huge brand recognition, huge presence, and they had a, what they called the dealer channel. And when the laser jet was born, Rick, Dick Hackborn, who invented it, was not allowed to sell it direct because it wasn't a, a core business. So what he did was, because of the, quote, break-even calculator, division, because that was still in existence, they pumped the laser jet in the channel of distribution. And what happened there is because that channel was there, the laser jet changed the company. Became a legend. So, <laughs> my, so my thesis is, if HP keeps the printer and PC division, even though it's not a huge money maker, it does produce a lot of revenue, has brand value and it has a channel. I think that can be leveraged. And supply chain. And, and the supply chain. I think that is something that as the market turns with big data, I think that the product configurations of HP will, will radically change in a different direction and they have all that important beachhead uh, position with the customers, the brand and the channels. And I think, you know, yesterday the, the LaserJet group was here and they're talking cloud and managed services. So to me, that is a great opportunity for HP, so I would not sell the printers in the PC division. And well, I think that would be a very, very bad move for Meg to do. In, in particular, in the printing and imaging division, my feeling is that HP's got to cut its costs, it's got to start generating free, free cash flow, and here's why. You know, we were talking to, to Nina about acquisition versus you know, organic growth. Clearly, HP's got to get back to its roots of invent, but it has become a game of acquisitions. You cannot compete as a big whale in this industry without being good at acquisitions. Oracle, IBM, EMC, VMware, they are showing the importance of acquisitions. Even HP with 3Com, 3PAR, left hand, you know, PolyServe, you know, autonomy, we'll see. HP's got to be able to show that, and so it's got to be able to generate free cash flow. The printing business prints money. Let's wrap this segment up by just talking about what Meg should do. Um, in the company, and so my opinion is, don't spin out the printers and the PC division, keep that. It's very, very important because it's an element that will allow you to, to pivot in the right direction on the product side as the market changes into this massive thermal growth of big data, and big data is an inflection point that rivals the, the PC revolution and client service, so don't spin that out. I think it's really important. I think you might want to get back in the mobile game down the road, so that's going to be a nice little placeholder for, yeah, for, for Meg. The other thing is, you're right, they need to essentially turn up the heat on corporate development to, to get the right acquisitions in place, to get that leadership position, and third, 
I would say that Meg really has to get her messaging out around the purpose of the company. And that's going to be like uh, just the vision statement around the overall direction. And they can keep the consumer business. I think that's important. And like, like Jeremy Burton at EMC, cloud means big data. is a very simple marketing positioning, but it tells you what EMC is doing. So yeah. I think that's what Meg, would, Meg and, should and do. And they are not done in storage. They're not done in, in networking. They're not done in software. They've got to make some acquisitions. Their storage, they got to go for all flash array and networking. They got to you know, really keep pushing at Cisco yeah. and beefing up the high end in software. They've really got to build build out that portfolio, and my focus on software would absolutely, John, I agree, would be big data. Okay, so uh, that's kind of our analysis of uh, Meg Whitman's uh, challenges and, and HP Discover, great energy here, great first step, I'm really impressed with that, and uh, we'll be right back with more analysis right after this break.